After I did my review of the two Pokemon games on the Switch, I said I was going to do a review of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Well, I'm finally going to do it now. I know it's pretty early to do it since it came out last year. So, here's my review of the games. In this game, there are three stories to participate. You have Victory Road, which is like the mainline games where you battle gym leaders and entering the league. In Starfall Street, you battle a team organization called Team Star. And the other one is Path of Legends, where a trainer named Arvin team up to defeat a few Titan Pokemon. So yeah, interesting choices to pick. And the story is not that complicated, to be honest. Is it the best story in the mainline game? No, but I like you can do all three main goals, in which that's what I did. But I'll talk about it when I get to them. So, did I like Scarlet and Violet? Yes. Is the game not perfect? Yes. Is it the top of my favorite Pokemon games? No, which, yeah, it's not going to top the others I love, but I will say it is better than Sword and Shield, which I know a lot of people are iffy on that game, but it's fine. Before I get to my review, I should mention the first trailer. In the beginning of 2022, a teaser trailer for Jerry and Shania Pokemon games were coming. We saw a glimpse of the starters, in which I did a shorts video on the trailer. Then the gameplay trailer in which I was hyped. Let's get to the game. First off, this is the first mainline Pokemon game to go full on open world. While Legends RCS did have open world, but there was only 5 areas and can't go further on the map. This game will let you go anywhere. So glad a Pokemon game does open world, similar to the Zelda games. Speaking of that region, let's talk about world building. Just like the past mainline games, they are inspired by real world during each region. The first four regions are based on small regions in Japan. Unova is based off of New York, Kalos is based off of France, Alola is based off of Hawaii, Galar is based off of the UK, and Paldea is based off of the Iberian Peninsula, consisting of the countries of Spain, Portugal, and Andorra, in which the Paldea region inspiration was a great choice. As for the new characters, they're good. Penny and Arvin are traditional Pokemon trainers, but they are likable later on. Pneumonia is a great rival with her own personality. Clavel is a good academic director in which he helps out with Team Star missions. The gym leaders are okay. I know they're not as memorable as some of the past ones, but they got their own battle styles. Same with the characters from Team Star and Elite Four, but at least the characters are better than the characters from Sword and Shield, with some exceptions. The music ranges from great to okay. I know Pokemon games has some of the best Pokemon soundtrack. This one is not the strongest. I know there's some really good music in the game, but it does shaft with music I wasn't a fan of. The graphics are visually stunning, even more than Sword and Shield. The gameplay remains the same with catching and battling mechanic, which I will always enjoy Pokemon games with the gameplay. The ending after you beat the champion was great, which it's like a post game in a way. There's a story about the professor depending on the version and see what is the mystery on it and it's actually one of the best parts in the game. I didn't know where the game was going to go and it's better than Sword and Shield's plot. So now let's get to the features throughout the game. I will say the academy that the player intends is a nice touch, which that's never happened in the past mainline games before. The Titan Pokemon stuff was great. It actually reminded me of the Totem Pokemon from Sun and Moon minus calling out an extra Pokemon, was still really good overall. The raid battles return in this game, since the feature was in Sword and Shield. It's alright, it's not one of my to-do lists in the game, but I like that you use Pokemon in raids to see what Terra types. Speaking of that, the new addition in the game is Terrastal. Ever since X and Y, they used one gimmick throughout the series. I will say, the Terrastal was great to use if I have trouble with the team during a battle. I can use Terralize the Pokemon and change its typing. I like that the players used their last Pokemon with Terra types. They brought back Hoarding Counters, which is a nice thing. Mass Outbreaks return in this game, and even sending out Pokemon in the field and having an auto battle with Wild Encounters. That's about it in terms of features, aside from Picnic and getting Gimme Gold Coins, but that's less I gotta say. Now let's get to the Pokemon, mainly new ones. There are so many new Pokemon in the new generation, 105 new Pokemon, 9 for the upcoming DLC, and 2 Paldean region forms. 
yeah, only Paldean Wooper and Paldean Tauros made it, and they look pretty good. The starters were a bit sus at first, but Fukoko, Gurumi, and Quaxley is still okay. But the final evolution, Quackoval, does look really cool. It's a peacock Pokemon, guys. But for me, I went with Sprigatito. It's a cute cat, really good typing, and the evolutions are great. Same with Fukoko's. Though, I like Florigato a bit more than Meowscarada, but I like both the same. As for other new Pokemon, I'm not going to go through all of them, but I have a few highlights. Palmont is a nice Electro-type rodent. Cerulege looks edgy, but still very cool. Palafan looks awesome with the hero form dolphin design. Baxcalibur is a great dragon Pokemon. And Tingaton looks amazing with a giant hammer as a weapon. There's even new evolutions for Pokemon in the previous generations. Which, my favorite out of the evolutions is Annihilate. This one looks awesome. It's pretty scary, but very cool at the same time. And a nice callback to Primeape's Pokedex entry. Plus, the added Paradox Pokemon. Different versions of Pokemon from different time, past, or future. They range from great to not good. Iron Thorns, Slitherwing, and Roaring Moon are some of my favorites from the Paradox. While Iron Juggles is my least favorite. Now let's get to the legendaries. If you're playing Scarlet, you get Coridon. If you're playing Violet, in which I own the version, you have Maridon. Both of them look great. I even like you can use them for riding or flying. These are the replacements for bikes and HM moves. So yeah, with all the great stuff in this game, there are downsides to this game. While the map and the open world are great to explore, I did get lost a few times during the game. But it wasn't bad, it was just my first time experience. Also, like Legends RCS, the textures are not that good, and the slow frame rate. Those Sunflora frame rate looks so bad. I'm looking at stop motion animation. And I agree from people, there's glitches in the game, like getting stuck in the mountains, or the game freezing, or weird shots, and even lighting. Seriously, Game Freak, did this game need to be broken in certain parts? Oh well, the game did get a few updates, but I don't know if it's still causing it after the updates. As for the others I mentioned, like some of the music, some of the characters, and some of the Pokemon are not the strongest points. Besides the flaws, Scarlet and Violet are really good Pokemon games. If I had to rank this with the other Pokemon games on the Switch, it would be in third. It is better than Sword and Shield. Even though I have some people like Scarlet and Violet over Sword and Shield, fair enough, I don't hate Sword and Shield as much as anyone else. If Scarlet and Violet didn't have glitches or the game being broken, it would have been solid. But Legends RCS is a better Pokemon game on the Switch. Still, I had a fun time playing the recent mainline Pokemon games, and maybe if the next generation will get better. Just don't let that future Pokemon game get broken or glitchy, please. Also, the DLC is coming with both parts, and I can't wait to try them. Maybe someday I'll try to get the DLC, since it looks good from what I've seen. I'm looking forward to it. That is all for the review of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Let me know where you rank this game with the other Pokemon games. Is it better than Sword and Shield? Or why you like Sword and Shield more than Scarlet and Violet? I'm curious to know. Next video will be coming in September, so I can work on a few videos. But I will see you all in the next video.